That song is stuck in my head all the time. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special video interview for OPFandom.com, in other words, OnePieceFandom.com, in conjunction with the largest One Piece group on Facebook, One Piece 2 million fans, with over 2.2 million members please welcome the live action actor of mihawk stephen john ward <laughs> hey everyone <laughs> hey welcome stephen thank you for um uh, being with us how you doing today yeah i'm good uh i just i, I just landed in texas yesterday um and it's like an eight hour time difference so i'm still trying to adjust uh so technically it's what are we it's like 1 a.m in my time uh so i my brain is still trying to like get my my not my brain my body is still trying to get with the program a little disoriented i assume yeah yeah <laughs> um and you're here in dallas for a convention yeah, I'm doing Collecticon this weekend, um, and then I'm going to go see family uh, that live in North Carolina next weekend, and then uh, right, next weekend, next week, and then next weekend I fly to Mexico uh, for another convention in oh, Monterey. Man. So that's yeah. crazy. Um, yeah, I fly a lot. It's been a it's wow. been a whirlwind. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine. It's very cool, bro. Yeah, I'm sure, but I know you know you have. You're a busy guy. I mean, like between the conventions and the acting and all the hoo ha, it's it sounds insane. Yeah, it doesn't. Um, it never used to be like that. Right, but I guess <laughs> once once Mihawk hit. Forget yeah, it. I, well, I mean, it took like a like maybe a month or two before it kind of really started hitting. Um, Cause I mean, I, like I, I used to, I used to have a day job. Next, I mean, I've been acting since I was eight years old, um, and I had a day job since I was since like twenty twelve, uh, after university. Um, because in my country, you can't just be an actor; you have to be an actor and have something else on the side. So, I would work a, I'd say a nine to five, but an eight to six, um, and uh, that's what I did for years um until the end of january I, I finally quit my job so that i could just focus on uh, giving everything to fans and to my charities um and and yeah just and my family like my family. whole life was just bouncing around all these things and when i wasn't bouncing around i was doing my day job and and so now i i can finally sit down and focus on what's important so awesome yeah. And you are from South Africa. I am from South Africa, and I know I don't sound South African, but it's because I've been in the States for a day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you haven't so, picked up the Dallas twang yet. Or the oh, no, no, no. And weirdly <laughs> enough, I thought it would be a lot more Southern here. I thought, oh, no. I thought I'd be, I, I, hold on. What, what did I thought I'd sound like? Y'all come um, back now, time. you're here. That, that's yeah, sort of like yeah, and someone <laughs> said to me, uh, what did they say to me at the restaurant today? Um not honey what do they say in dallas that's like super texan uh it's like super affectionate as well um hmm. i don't know shit i can't never remember been to texas uh, never been to but, Dallas. oh so i mean it's a very cool place I, i've only ever flown through here before so it, it, it's nice to actually be here um but my my point is is i thought i i, I thought i'd talk no, <laughs> it's a southern <laughs> accent. So I was doing this earlier with a friend that was auditioning for something, because uh, I was helping with his with him with his audition. Um, um, that's it right there. I thought I'd be talk talking a bit more like this, but I'm not. Um, right, 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 but right. It, it it's as soon as I hear someone American, it doesn't matter where they're from in the states. I go straight to like standard American. So my actual accent sounds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I actually sound like this, um, which is kind of a bit more British mixed right. with uh, like Australian, I think Americans would associate more with. Um, and this is actually a great test because I wanted to speak more South African. So I'm going to focus on speaking more South African now. Nice. And now I'm into it. 
Awesome. But I'm going to go straight back to American, which is what I've just done now. So. <laughs> All right. So I'm curious to know, what were the first steps in your journey of becoming Mihawk from hearing about the audition to finally landing the part? Sure. So uh, when I first got the audition, I didn't know uh, that the audition was for me. Um, I, my day job, as I explained to you uh, prior to this, was uh, I worked as a casting director. So if I'm not in the movie or the series, I put people in movies or series. And when I say put, I mean I audition people and show them to the directors and the producers and they decide because we as casting directors don't have that kind of power. Um, but uh, that was my job in South Africa. And I've done, you know, a lot of international and, and local stuff. Um, so what tends to happen is agents will email me as Steven, um, but it's actually for a different Steven that uh, uh, they represent. Um, so I'll, I, so that's what happened to me. I got an email saying, hey, Steven, uh, here's an audition from this casting director. And I immediately responded saying, hey, just making sure this is going to the right Steven, I'm pretty sure you sent it to the wrong one because that happens a lot. Um, and this agent was the first a acting agent or theatrical agent that I ever had in South Africa. Um, and I've got a really good relationship with her. So I, 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 my mind was just like, oh, you sent it to the wrong person. And I just want to make sure that that actor gets that opportunity for whatever audition that is. Um, and I then went about my day and she had responded, but I didn't see it or I didn't, you know, register it because I, I have a lot to do as a casting director. Um, and anyway, in, later in the afternoon, I saw her response and she said, uh, no, this email is for you, the casting director in Cape Town, which is a different city in South Africa where I live. Um, uh, 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 excuse me. She doesn't know how to get hold of you so she messaged me so i was like oh that's weird there's only like 10 to 20 casting directors in south africa we're a small country we fit into texas right. and then there's more of texas so so i called the casting director oh that was a high pitch i called the casting director and i was like hey bonnie what's up you have my number and she goes oh i completely forgot anyway this is the audition I can't tell you what it's called because it was called Project Panda. They didn't call it One Piece. Um, and mm. you should audition for it. It's it's a it's a good idea. In a nutshell. Um, and then I was like, you know what? Okay, sure. I I was very focused at that time more on my family and friends and uh, my career as a casting director than I was at an act as an actor at that time. Um, and uh, I was like, okay, you know what? Screw it. I'll do it. So my wife then, w when we read the description, it said, uh, firstly, my character's name was Videl. I knew it was a, a, uh, an adaption. So my first thought was, oh, shit, they're doing, oh, shit, I can't swear. <laughs> oh, PG-13. Yeah, okay, all right. I swear oh, shoot. live action. <laughs> oh, shoot. Uh, they're doing another Dragon Ball Z. I can't do this. Because I just uh, thought Videl mm -hmm. and Dragon Ball Z, and I was like, no, 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 no. And then I was like, but they would never. <laughs> I can't be Videl. That's impossible. Right. Right. So I was like, okay, so it's clearly not that. But that was my initial jerk reaction. Was like, oh, they're doing Dragon Ball Z. Um, and then uh, we read it, and it was like, okay, it's a swordsman. And I was still like, oh, Dragon Ball Z Trunks. Okay, no, it can't be that. Because why would they say Videl? And very confusing. Anyway, so the description was actually like he's the best swordsman ever and you, he's got like notable eyes. So my wife was like, okay, we can't really do anything with swords. So let's put eyeliner on you uh, so that your eyes pop. So I was like, you know what? Hell yeah, let's do it. So we popped eyeliner on. And my eyes just like, even I could see, I watched my audition the other day that for a while I told people I didn't know if I had it anymore because I couldn't find it. But then I found an old hard drive with it on and, and it, it exists, but I'm not going to release it. Oh, come on. Um, no, 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 no. It's completely right, different. Right <laughs> it's completely different from, fair, from fair. What, what the end result is. Of course. Um, but uh, 
it, I, I don't know if it's mine to release. I, I, I think it might be owned by Netflix. So, I'm, so my wife put eyeliner on me and we just did this audition and I had a, a fishing rod, a tiny fishing rod, a, a children's fishing rod for my big sword, that big reveal that everyone knows in the show. Mm -hmm. um, and, and weirdly enough, I did it the same way as they did it in the show, uh, not knowing it. Um, oh. And did the whole <laughs> fighting, more like fencing than anything else. Um, and, uh, and then the next day I got a call saying, Hey, uh, you've got a call back. Can you do it this afternoon? And I said, yeah, sure. You know, um, I got nothing else on. So, uh, I did it and the director kind of just, we, we put the eyeliner back on and the director kind of just like kept looking in and in and in to the camera like this. Um, and at the end of it, yeah, at the end of it, the director was like, I can't stop looking at your eyes. And my wife is laughing in it's the background the because she knows it's full on eyeliner and you can't <laughs> really tell in the audition unless you know i have eyeliner on so i think that's part of the reason i got it um wow but then when they told me because like a week later they then said okay yeah you booked the role it's me hawk and it's one piece and then i was like oh no because i you know it's the biggest anime in the world and and yep. it was terrifying and it was like I, I, my wife and i literally just sat and we were like okay so you're either this is gonna make or break your career completely right yeah and and, and thankfully okay. it did <laughs> yeah thankfully i'm doing yes. good yeah I mean, um wow yeah you really capture you know his stoic nature his cheekiness his confidence, his irreverence. I mean, <laughs> Jesus, wow. Um, and congratulations. I mean, uh, incredible. Thank no. you. It, it's been the interview's completely over. Completely life changing. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm also curious to know, you know, the process of like recreating Mihawk. Uh, like what was production production having you do and what were you doing personally were you were you method acting were you dressed as mihawk all the time uh offset no. yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, training so okay so the first thing i did when i got confirmed because okay so i didn't know one piece i knew of one piece mm -hmm. i hadn't watched it like I, I i grew up watching dragon ball z and pokemon and uh, uh digimon and stuff like that i hadn't watched mm -hmm. one piece because south africa only kind of got whatever the west got and one piece didn't do so well when they first released it in the states um so we right. kind of got it but didn't really get it um, so I didn't really know the show. And then w when I got it, I started doing my research. Um, and the first thing I did was obviously look at my character and I was like, oh, damn, look at how many abs that, um, not human person has. <laughs> and I looked down and I'm like, I don't have uh... that. Like that's, I'm in fairly good shape. I was a lot thinner. Hmm. Um, yeah, CGI this. when I auditioned, <laughs> no. no, there was no, <laughs> no <yeah. laughs> Um, but I looked down and I was like, no, there's no abs. So I was like, okay, first of all, I need to hit the gym. I've got at least a year to, it wasn't a year. It was like six months, maybe half a year mm -hmm. to kind of get myself together. Um, so I, I literally, the next day I just started exercising, um, and just to get into shape and eating right and stuff. Cause I was like, oh, okay. First things first with these types of adaptions is people want you to look like the character so i was like okay he's super muscular let me get into the gym um then i started focusing on the accent um mm -hmm. and i used uh, uh john gremion who plays the english voice actor for one piece uh, for mihawk uh, i used the base of his voice because he's very nasal um but he's still got like a kind of tonality to him that's I'm stronger than you and bored at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, so I started with him and then I was watching The Lion King with my daughter, who at the time was like two or something. Scar. Uh, You're about to talk about Scar, aren't you? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I yeah. Yeah, you it, it, like it's when you know yeah. you like you listen to it and you're like, oh, it's the same thing. I was yeah. really I was saying it today. I was thinking about it earlier because someone a, a friend of mine was asking me about the voice. Um, 
and it's I know that hyena, I, I know that hyenas are essential. <laughs> Come now, Vice Admiral, I don't take or it's the same wow. level in the voice. It's crazy. It's funny because I yeah, I was just, you know, watching clips of your role recently and I was like, he reminds me of someone, but who is it? And it's a freaking it's lion. Jeremy it's Irons. A lion. Jeremy Irons, right? Yeah. So, it's wow. Jeremy freaking Irons. Who's Thank a you for phenomenal that phenomenal actor? Amazing. Like I like if I could be him, I would. Um, like, yep. <laughs> he's he's amazing. So yeah, that I was literally just sitting there watching Lion King with my daughter, and I was like, oh, Scar is bored, super powerful, conniving. He's freaking Mihawk in a lion. Wow. <laughs> he's dark. That... I was like, okay, that's the one. So then I kind of mixed the two voices together, and that's how um, the the uh, the accent came out. Um, and uh okay so then so that was the my self training and then the voice thing and then i uh, i was told okay uh you're going to come in and we're going to teach you how to sword fight because i the only sword fighting i know is picking up a stick that looks like a sword and fighting with it till it breaks you know like right. a kid <laughs> right. imagination um but i had to look better than McKenyu, who is an actual swordsman mm, from the age of like a three. Difficult task. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to say the and least. <laughs> very difficult to do in like three months. Um, Perhaps impossible. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> ooh, ooh. <laughs> um, I think McKenna might have helped me there, but uh, uh, right, right. yeah. So they they brought me in, um, and we started. I started training with a stunt team uh, from literally from day one. I flew in and I went straight to the stunt tent and we started working uh and, and that's when uh sean verth who's my stunt double um started literally training me on everything from scratch and i was horrible i can't tell you how stupid i looked trying to do like there's there's i think it's 12 moves of attacking and then 12 moves defending or something and it it, it just it looked so bad <laughs> when I, I look want to back see that at the footage. footage, I want to see that. No, <laughs> <laughs> it looks so dumb. Um, I, I remember all the movements. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I think it was twelve. Okay, twelve. So anyway, uh, uh, but yeah, so uh, uh, we started training from the get go every day, just hacking at it and hacking at it, and then that started becoming. It went from sword training to like hit h i t t training, which is just like super fast bursts of movement in mm -hmm. between breaks. Um, and, and then uh, it started with, obviously with normal gym exercises, then boxing, then a little bit of break dancing because I wanted to do what, you know, I, Jacob Romero was doing break dancing. And I was like, oh, I want to do that. So I joined in and enjoyed it. Um, and uh, and then they, they got me in with uh, uh, Koji Kawamoto, who is a, a Japanese swords master that they flew in for the show, who is Zoro's stunt double. Oh. Um, and when I say stunt double, I mean, these guys, we did all the stunts. Um, they were just there to make sure that there were no stunts that we didn't get hurt on. So like Sean Verth only did one stunt for me. I don't know how many Koji did. I think McKenyu did everything. Um, yeah, but it, it, it's more about like we can't do anything that's going to maybe hurt us because if we get hurt, then they got to stop production and, and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, but we did everything. Um, and so he trained me in a uh, knife fighting style, uh, a saber style, and uh, and then longsword, a uh, broadsword, uh, which is, you know, my big Yoru. And uh, man, he is incredibly fast like i would i would come home with bruises and cuts on my hands well especially with the knife stuff because he would come at me with a, you know a, a, like a, a cutlass um and, and and i mean it's not a metal cutlass but it's still hard and it hurts and he would hit me if i wasn't there in time it would get me um that's how you gotta learn i guess yeah, <laughs> and that was exactly it. I was like, oh, I don't want to get hurt. I got to get there quicker. So I had to learn to do things much faster. And, you know, he taught me a lot of moves that we never used in the show, but it was all just baseline stuff. Um, 
to to uh, get me to understand like what the final choreography was um and uh and then and then the last thing i really did was uh, i i took measurements <laughs> i got pictures of me measuring the practice sword that i was using like the big one uh me using my arms to measure it and then i built one at home because i was off for like a month i think before i came back to shoot and i was like oh i don't want to lose everything that i did um so i built my own sword out of dowel sticks and and uh pool noodles and, and duct tape wow. so that i could practice uh continuously every day because i really wanted to you know make it look good and i had to look better than mckenna like i had to <laughs> and you did you all well, thank goodness tell. because it's damn hard to look better than him like that man is so good at sword know, fighting like he would he would hit a blade like right in front of my nose, like within a mill. I, I don't know if you guys use millimeters, but like it's it's we like do, this actually. close. And he'd stop. Like he's an insane with wow. swords. Yeah, it's incredible. That's amazing. Yeah. So there there was like, a lot of training at the end of the day. So it's just amazing that you went from like just like fumbling and being clumsy to like actually sword fighting with McKenyu. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. No, now I can hurt someone with a sword. Yeah. Like if yeah. I get a, ever get into a fight and it's swords, I could probably <laughs> be okay. <laughs> All right. I will not challenge you to a duel. Speaking of swords, um, Mihor Mihawk's sword, Yor Yoru, already has kind of its own following. I mean, there's a, there's a video on YouTube with almost 11 million views of like blacksmiths and craft craftspeople like building this thing, like reforging it. Um, it's yeah, legendary anime sword. So, what was it like wielding the Yor Yoru that that they made for you? Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so, when I put on the outfit, it makes you. It's it's almost like if you're a hunched person, you put on the outfit. It's like putting on a suit. You automatically you you get upright and you feel stronger and mm. and better. And I was like, damn, I feel good. And then they gave me the sword. And then I was like, oh. it felt, it felt like going, maybe this is too far, but it felt like going Super Saiyan. <laughs> it was, Super Saiyan, nice. Yeah, it was, it was like this, like no one could touch me on set. No one. But was it like super heavy and at first you were just like Ugh. oh yeah it's it's not <laughs> look i mean it's made out of i i can't remember what it, it's like carbon fiber and something else but but you got to remember that it because it's so big it's it's damn heavy like you can't when i first picked it up i couldn't hold it i i would shake when i held it so i had to train my right arm to literally like that shot where it comes out and down to get it smooth. I had to train doing wow. that like a lot so that it just looked super lightweight, Damn. but it's not a comfortable thing to hold. Like it's right. massive. No pain, no gain. You must've felt like yeah. uh, He-Man at some point. I have the power. I don't know if you remember <laughs> Masters of the Universe. Yeah, with Dolph, with I did. Dolph Lundgren. Yeah. I don't care what anyone says. That's one of the best movies ever. Though I got a I, oh man, this is off topic. I got an audition for Dolph Lundgren film way back earlier in my career that I completely no botched, and I know why I botched it. Um, but I was so upset because I couldn't act with Dolph Lundgren, and I really wanted to. Um, but you know, it's part of the, it's part of the industry. Of course, of course. Yeah, oh, you get so some, you lose some. Hmm. Um. So. It was really great to see this show be shot in South Africa. You're you're from you're a South African mm -hmm. actor, and yeah. and and for the show to use so many South African um, actors and crew members, and uh, how does that make you feel? And are you excited for the future of the film and TV industry in your country? I'm I'm really glad that you're that you've said that it's used so many South African actors and crews because so many people don't know that um, this is one of the productions because we shoot a lot in south africa like a lot of internationals come to shoot with us oh. um we obviously shoot a lot of our local stuff we've got a huge service industry um which essentially means that we do the work no one else wants to do um and we do it for long hours and not illegal hours but long hours and we, we don't complain 
is our thing. Um, and one piece really showcased what we can do, especially in the costume department, the makeup department and the stunt department, which has always been like thrown under the bus in films for us. Uh, mm. So they really stood out here. You know, we had HODs because usually not you uh, before internationals would come and shoot with us and they'd fly in their head of departments, their HODs. And then slowly they've started allowing South Africans to be HODs. Slowly they've started allowing South Africans to become bigger and bigger roles. Um, and One Piece really took the leap with South Africans and gave us a shot. And it damn well paid off. Like as a costing director in South Africa, I've cost local films and series and commercials and international films and series and commercials. And there's a lot of South African actors that I never rated before. And then after seeing them, like in, we did Resident Evil, uh, the series, which didn't go past the season, but the, the level of acting from South Africans, I didn't recognize. Same thing in One Piece. I looked at these, some of these people that I'd known for years that I'm friends with, and I'm like, you're, all you needed was an opportunity to explore and you can do wonders. It was, it was very eye-opening mm -hmm. as an actor and as a casting director in South Africa to see what the local talent can do. Um, and I'm so happy for them. I'm still unhappy that we're a service industry, but that's got to do with our government and shit because they don't want to move past that. Fair, but, fair. Um, you know, but it's their loss. They don't see the future. Hmm. Look at me attacking my government. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair. And I mean, at least one piece is, you know, creating more opportunities and maybe paving yeah. the way for like, yeah. a better Yeah, it's future. really it's like, like Netflix has really opened up South Africa, um, the South African film industry. Uh, which I'm super grateful for because, you know, I'm a, I'm a big advocate for, you know, the rights of South Africans and, and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm very grateful for them um, and especially for One Piece for it, it putting people and my country on the map. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. Very yeah. happy to hear. Very happy to hear that. Me too. Um, I've also, yeah, I actually... Uh, <laughs> I spoke to Grant Ross on Twitter um, and he, it was funny. I was supposed to, I think, interview him first and then, he, yeah. and then he was like, oh yeah. He's like, I've been talking to Mihawk about the strike. And I was like, oh, maybe I can message Mihawk too. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I do want to, I, I want to interview uh, Grant because uh, he's from South Africa and he, yeah. he did amazing as Genzo and, um, He's a great, he's one of those guys that I, I always knew was a good actor. And then I saw him in one piece and I was like, oh my God, he's, he's amazing. really good. Like, um, again, it comes to, it comes down to when you're given the opportunity to be free and explore, you can do so much more, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of us are, unfortunately, we're confined to, you know, one day roles or, you know, little bit parts and stuff. And we can't really do much with that. So we can't really showcase it. Um, and I was naive to think that that's all we had. Um, so I'm glad they proved me wrong. Amazing. You know, and Grant's a phenomenal dude. He's a dad like me. So, you know, he we got really the cool. same mindset and, and, you know, outlooks on life and stuff. So, but he's, he's a lot more out there than me. <laughs> Right, right. Okay. All right. I, I'm a lot more reserved. That man will come in with a, a, a million percent energy on everything. And I'm like, wow. how do you do that? How do you, I don't know how he has that kind of energy. Huh. It's incredible. All right. Well, it's we incredible. Gotta, we got to have him. I got to interview him. Mm. And also, you gotta uh, do, I'll text him after this. I'll be like, hey, go for the interview. <laughs> yeah. And then maybe that'll be great. And maybe um, uh, Chioma um Umela. Who's yeah. Plays Chioma Umela. Did I pronounce that right? Close, okay. yeah. Okay, close, close. Uh, who plays Nojiko. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's so many people I'd love to, to speak to. Um, uh, 
You got so, Alexander Man Maniatis, who played uh, Clahador. He's a good one, too. Okay, yeah. I mean, yeah, Albert uh, Pretorius, mm. sorry, Bucci. Uh, you're, yeah, you're, you're going to be in a, I was looking it up, you're going to be in a show with him called Catch Me a Killer, or did that come out yet? Yeah, is that with Albert? Uh, it's with Charlotte. That's Hope. with Grant. Oh, yeah, Grant's in it, but uh, uh, the guy who plays Albert's in it, too. He's oh. in the trailer, I actually looked at it. Yeah, so again, we... Man, I have so many, I have so many issues with that show. <laughs> oh, okay. Maybe we shouldn't talk about it. No, it's okay because it should be said. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to be negative, uh, sure. but again, I mentioned that we're a service industry. So mm -hmm. essentially, what we do is we get hired to do what we do on the day, and after that, we become scrap. Ah, so. That's you know, I, I think there's a missed opportunity for every production company in the world to, if you want your stuff advertised, you can get free advertising from every actor that did your show if you just communicate with them. And some people just don't communicate. Um, mm -hmm. And they lose that advertising. So that's uh, that's on them. And that's how they want to do things. So that's how they want to do things. But yeah. Grant and I did a show, but we weren't in a scene together. <laughs> oh, okay. Huh. No. That's awesome. I okay. I'd love to talk to him. Um so it's it's you know, it's like like you said, it's great to see so many actors land these like big character roles that are not huge, massive celebrities, you know, like they, they didn't make Arnold Schwarzenegger garp, right? You know, like like we're like fans were like, please, Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yeah. But but you know, people were talk sorry, people were talking about um uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson being chopper. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean like And I was like just like, don't if you put Dwayne in our series, I'm out. I'm like, I'm not doing <laughs> this. I love him. I, I I think he's an amazing human, right. at least what he portrays online, but don't it's enough. It's right. enough. It's you true. gotta step away. But yeah, it's nice to have fresh faces. That's true. How but how do you feel about um I mean Jamie Lee Curtis has been showing great interest? I mean, I mean, she wants it. it. She knows the character, Dr. Kureha. Yeah. yeah. She wants it. So, like, just, yeah. She can do so whatever she wants. So, someone like <laughs> that who actually knows the show deserves to be in it. Exactly. Because they're invested. The, the people that were cast in One Piece, some of them knew about the show, like Emily Rudd. Um, oh, right. A lot of right. us, especially the South Africans, we didn't know about the show. But when we were casting it, the first thing we did was watch a lot a lot so when we got on set everyone was invested so someone like jamie lee curtis who knows the show will come on set not as jamie lee curtis she'll come on right. set invested in the show for the end goal because our end goal is to find the one piece <laughs> so like we all want to know what it is so we're there for one reason. <laughs> yeah. So we're there for one reason. We're, very, yeah. we're there for the same cause. And someone like Jamie Lee Curtis, I think, would come in and be part of that cause and not be a celebrity, even though she is. I think she would be, I hope she would be better than that. Because mm. the rest of us are not here for fame, I think. We're just here to make good content and make people happy and have a good time. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I do feel like uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is not trying to take advantage yeah. of the popularity of it. I feel like she's really invested in She was very in it before character. season one released. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but I don't know if you you heard about this recently. Uh, Inaki and, and Jacob uh, were at a convention, and they said they want Danny De Devito to come on board. I, I, I saw. Know I saw them. I saw Inaki joke. say that. Combination of both the joke and uh, seriousness. I, I mean, mean, I got I, 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 I would love. I got a Danny Devito pillow right here. <laughs> I would love for him to come. To be on the show. I love that pillow so much. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm where opfandom.com is endorsed by Dan DeVito pillows. <laughs> See, that pillows. is, yeah, that is the wildest yeah. thing. Yeah, I, I mean, look, <laughs> I love Danny DeVito for uh, uh, Hercules. Oh, yeah. Um, 
So that man can do no wrong in my eyes. So again, he's not, to me, a mainstream. It's not, you know, if Danny DeVito came and did One Piece, it wouldn't be a, a series about Danny DeVito. Mm-hmm. You know, I find like you take Will Smith, for example. W- Will Smith did, uh, what was that? Uh, um, where he played Deadshot. Oh no! A, a, even better example when he, when he did Aladdin. Okay. Oh right, right. Aladdin is a movie about Aladdin, but then when Will Smith got cast in it, it was a movie about Will Smith. Ah, uh, right. So you know, if you start bringing in big names like that, I think it becomes more about them mm-hmm. than it becomes about the end result, which is One Piece. Right. Um, so, if, you know, people like Danny DeVito, they don't go into a movie and make it about them. Right. And, you know, you know they, they, they go in and they they go full on into the character. They they give everything to the show. It, it's those kinds of people. I think, you know, and I don't have a say who gets into the show. Those kinds of people of I'd love to work with because they see the end result. Yeah. And, you know, it's not like Jamie Lee Curtis wants like a huge character it's it's kind of a minor yeah very minor in the grand scheme of one piece so um yeah these people want they see they see the fun in it and that's right right. i think what helped in season one is everyone saw the fun in what one piece is so you know we're all having fun doing this and and i think yeah if, if bigger names get attached i i hope they have fun doing it too and it's not you know about them hmm. yeah piece the journey just the journey yeah the most cliche theory of all in one piece fandom um what was the moment what was the moment you wanted to become an actor is there one I defining watched... moment a formative yeah. moment yeah okay um i will give the moment before but I'll give you the moment that I decided to be an actor. Okay. The man that I looked up to and I wanted to be him as he was as this character controlling the audience shouted at me as an eight-year-old child and he was like 25 and swore at me and told me I was useless. I looked at him and I said, I no longer want to be you. I want to be better. And from that moment on, I never looked back. Well, I looked back once. Okay. Like a couple of years ago, 2018, I looked back. But it was, it was, that was the defining moment where I was like, I'm going to do this forever. And it started out as I'm going to be better than you. And then I, I beat him. And I was like, well, what's next? And then I was like, oh, I want to be better than these people. And then I was better than them. Better is a, di- it's, it's difficult to say in, in mm-hmm. acting because it, just, it, you know, a lot of it is luck um, and right time and right place. But, you know, perseverance, I've seen a lot of those actors that I wanted to be become nothing because they weren't focused and, and they weren't ready to take to give everything to it. Um, And I did, and it ate me Hmm. completely. Uh, And then I let go, but still gave it my all. Um, And then it worked out. So uh, yeah, my defining, essentially the the answer is my defining moment was someone was a dick to me and (laughs) that was enough motivation to be like, screw you, I'm gonna do better than you could ever imagine. And I did. That person. Yeah. <laughs> so you want to motivate me? Be a dick to me, and then I'll. <laughs> yeah. Then I'll... All right. There you go. So most directors get the best work out of me. They're just an asshole to me, and I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, pro- like right, proving someone. <laughs> Interesting. And uh, well, Zorro's got a long way to go, I guess, to prove to prove oh, to you, Mihawk. Long way. Long ass way to go. <laughs> I'm just. I'm scared. Yeah. Like when the anime and manga, but, like eventually get because they have to get to that point like 
Right. That's his whole reason yeah. in this world. Man, my social media is just gonna it's gonna just attack full on. I'm just What do you think about the One Piece community so far and, and the conventions? Any great stories, bizarre stories? Need to get security for any reason? <laughs> People challenging uh, challenging okay. you to real duels? Oh yeah, no, I've got that. <laughs> okay. Um so look, for the most part, uh, I've found that uh, One Piece fans are pretty respectful. Um, but I also made a point like in the beginning of my career to be like, hey, I'm a family man. I've got kids. I've got a wife. I love them. You know, um, so no one's really crossed the boundary. Mm. I've had two incidents where it was like too much. Um, and I'm a pretty nice guy. Like I don't fight. You are. I don't, I'm not, a, I'm not a fighter. I'm a lover. <laughs> I want to, I want to hug everyone. When I go to all these conventions, I'm like, do you want to hug? You know, cause I think human interaction is important. Mm. Um, and it makes moments that much more special. And I want to create moments with people. And that's why I do these conventions. I don't do them cause there, I, you know, it's cool. I get to travel all over the world and, you know, do cool things, but that's part for the course. It's still like the reason I do these things is because fans are the reason that I have a career. So I want to give as much of myself as I can to them. That's that I, that I, that I can, um, so I spend time with each and every fan. I, I, I get a lot of fans that are, are sad and you know, unsure about their lives and, and stuff like that. And I want to change that. I, wanna, I have a whole thing about a smile a day, which is an NGO I started as well. But I, I just want to make one person smile a day. Um, and that's where I started doing these conventions because I realized I could make one person smile. And then I have a line of people. So that's more than one person a day. Uh, and that's what matters to me. If I can make people happy, then that's what I want. Um, some people overstep, two in particular that I won't mention. Um, <laughs> but I, and, and those people taught me, unfortunately, that I have to keep an arm's length with everyone. Um, because... Keeping your, your, your arm's length. Yeah, my arm. Yours, like, yeah. Yours, like <laughs> yeah, keep the, yours, arms, like. Yours, arms, like. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate because I want to love everyone. Um, of course. But everyone, not everyone, uh, some people think that you owe them something. Right. There's and that's difficult to navigate and I'm still trying to navigate and I'm not trying to be an asshole about it because I, I understand where they're coming from. I've met like uber famous people before that I, I don't know how to function around them. Um, so I really try to be nice, but because again, I try and I try and respond to every single person on social media that I can. Um, and, and I start in the beginning, I could do it and then it started getting too much. But so any, anyone who's watching, if I haven't responded to you and you've sent me a message, I've definitely read it. I've a hundred percent looked at it, read the whole thing. If it's in a different language, I, I copy paste it into translate so I can understand what you're saying. I read it all. I just can't respond to everyone. He's a busy um, man. Yeah, but it's also just like a hundred thousand people that I, it's impossible. Contact like I don't, know, I've got children. Like I got, you know, I, know, I, know. I got a, a three year old and a one one month old. Like it's impossible mm -hmm. to do everything. So I had in Peru a security detail around me that because uh, I couldn't walk through conventions because I actually like conventions. Like I'm a nerd at heart. I want to go and buy pop figurines and see what people make and knit and stuff like that. Like that stuff is cool to me. 
I love nerd stuff. Like I'm a, I, I'm gonna meet Goku tomorrow. Oh, I, I mean, I'm like Goku kind of excited, English but I'm more excited <laughs> to meet Vegeta one day in my career because I'm a Vegeta lover more than a Goku. But mm. it's still cool. I grew up with Goku. Um, the I'm gonna meet Yugi. Actor. Yeah, the the voice actor. Um, I'm gonna meet Yugi and Kaiba. Yugi, Man. Dan Green, Jay Snyder. Yeah, I so. I, I made my I'm a voice actor and I made my um, I made my animation demo with him. Really, Dan Green, Jay Snyder, yeah, uh, very cool guy. I don't I don't know how you're so calm saying their names because I told my agent this morning I was like I don't know how I'm gonna do anything if they come into the room <laughs> and they speak like Yugi and Kaiba because that that is that is the the one anime I got my wife to watch. Oh wow! And she watched the whole thing with me. She's not an anime lover. She watched the whole thing with me, and she loved it. Like I, huh. ooh, I love Yu-Gi-Oh way too much for my own health. Um, but I, I can't. And now I'm just like rambling on now about other people. But this is what I. You know? Well, tell. Oh, gee, I wonder if he remembers me. I I haven't spoken to him since our sessions, and he just created an incredible demo for me. Hmm. Say hi. I'll ask Tony, him. Tony Waldman. I'm, I've I've been doing pretty pretty well with voice acting since since I had my sessions with him. So I'm, I'm very grateful. Awesome. I, I, I'll very see grateful Maybe that. that'll get maybe that'll get me in for them to do the voices for me because oh. I re I'm so desperate to hear them speak like that. That is awesome. like that's so. I'm cool. a super super nerd when it comes to this stuff. Oh yeah. So I remember my train of thought now. So I love to walk around conventions and support. Like I go and buy stuff from uh, the booths. Um, because I, I want to support people everywhere I go. Um, and I'm very particular, like, I like, like Pokemon hats and stuff like that. And, um, anyway, so, uh, wait, where was I going with <laughs> that completely lost my, my train of thought. I'm still thinking about Yugi. <laughs> oh yeah. Peru. Uh, so I had to, they were like, you can't walk around by yourself. And I was like, oh, no, I'll be fine. They're like, no, we're going to send a security detail with you. So they sent one. And as I walked through, people would push through my security detail and grab onto me. And I remember one moment where someone's hand latched onto me and I looked left. And by the time I looked, the hand was gone. And I looked around and my security guy had thrown this person off. Me. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. That's it was. Horror. Yeah, it was scary. extreme. <laughs> Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was a wild experience and, and, you know, no one got hurt. It wasn't like they threw them like in a movie throw. Um, but I, I also get it. Like, again, there's certain fans that want a piece of you because they think you're an, an item. Um, and they, they deserve something from you. And, and I want to say to those fans, I will give you everything just give me the space and the time so that I can give it to you. <laughs> like, don't force your way in. Right. I will give you that time. <laughs> Each Stephen and every John one Ward. of you. Stephen yeah. John Ward, a giver. You heard it here. Yeah. <laughs> um, who, let's see, who, who did you hang out with most on set? I, I know you said on set, but oh, okay. I hung out most with, Taz Skyler and Jacob Romero, because um, we were always in the training tent every single day, um, you know, for four hours minimum. Um, so I was with them a lot. Uh, obviously, McKenyu quite a bit, uh, and him and I still message every now and then. Taz and I still keep in touch. Uh, on set, weirdly enough, Anaki's uh, uh, mom. And I spoke a lot. Huh. Uh, yeah, she was on set with us, and she would bring a whole basket full of treats. So I snuck up right next to her, and I was like, what can I have today? And she would open <laughs> her picnic basket, and it was just, like, everything you could imagine. Um, and So we'd eat all the treats. Uh, Emily Rudd, I spent a lot of time with. Um, yeah, I mean, like, the main the main cast were always there. So, we, you know, we, we got to spend a lot of time with them um yeah 
that that but i got closer to the south african cast even though i wasn't in the same scenes with them because we were in the same show and we all discovered a like-minded uh purpose we became a lot closer which i never was before um with them and that that really makes me happy because again the local actors really stepped up and showed that they have so much more in them than what they've been offered and it all just comes down to what they're offered you know which is again worldwide mm -hmm. if you give an actor nothing you'll get nothing if you give them everything they'll do everything one piece netflix thank you steven maeda and <laughs> yeah. all, who else can we thank so many and matt people. owens matt owens who else? Uh, the Tomorrow Studios. Oh, the, the, wasn't there a guy who? Um, who's the guy in Tomorrow Tomorrow Studios? He 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 helped create um, Prison Break. I thought he was like uh, the one who was uh, started I mean, started this whole thing. I don't know. I, don't, I yeah I didn't know about that either. I just know Matt and Steve Marty were. Marty Adelstein, Marty Adelstein. I don't know. I, don't know. I, don't know that. I never met him. I only Matt and Steve were the only two that I really spent time with because they were on set for every single scene, um, you know, with the directors. And, you know, they were so involved. Uh, people ask me, did you ever eat meat? Did I ever eat? Did you ever meet Oda? Um, I was and I, say, I just, did oh, there you go. So no, no, I never, I never met Oda. Um, cause you know, why would he come out to South Africa? Uh, you know, he, he had a finger on the pulse for everything and Matt and Steve being there every single day that was through Oda. Like there, they would chat with him and they would relay the information and make sure that everything was how it should be. Um, so I never met him, but I, you definitely felt that he was there. Like there was this ominous thing of like, oh, Oda's watching. We should yeah. do this right. Like binoculars from far away. Yeah. 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 He, <laughs> I know he's he was private, definitely he's sitting on one person. of the islands and checking you out. Right. Um, but yeah, so Matt and Steve were a huge help with like making sure that we did the right thing. Also reassuring us that our choices were the right choices. You know, a lot of us came in. Uh, especially me, I came in, you know, with what I thought was right. And they turn around and they were like, this, we think this is the right way to go. You should keep working at this. Um, and, you know, so they, it's really nice to have positive influence on a set versus saying, hey, change this, change that. Yeah, they were they were really invested um, in each and every person, whether you were a day player, uh, had one line, or you're in a, you're a recurring role. So they they were there for everything, um, which goes to show how much you know they care about the show and exactly. Yeah, and uh, you know I understood that Oda. Um, made you all reshoot some things were you part of any of the scenes that had to be reshot because oda said no this needs to be reshot yes oh, <laughs> yes okay. I was. wow um we we i'm not gonna say what it is but we re yeah, okay. we we shot something and then i was done for like a month and i remember when i fin when i wrapped shooting i had my whole like oh steven ward's done clap clap and i was like yeah great i can relax and then i started eating like crap <laughs> and relaxing because it was a long time to shoot so i was like right. yeah, yeah let me go get mcdonald's and you know um and then like a month later i got a call <laughs> and they were like um hey can you come back and i was like what <laughs> did i initially i was like did i do something wrong and they're like no uh, Gomu, Gomu, can you come back and redo here. this? And I was like, well, uh, who's asking? And then they were like, Matt's asking. So I'm like, why did you even call? Why didn't you just book my flight? I would have been there. Just don't even start the conversation. I, I would do anything for Matt. If he called me right now, I'd stop this interview and answer the call. And if he said, fly to this country, I'd fly to that country. Like that man, I would do anything for him. Um, 
So it's the second they're like, Matt needs you to redo this. I was like, okay, why did you call? Why didn't you just book the flight and tell my agent that Matt said so and cool. So I, I and then, so yeah, we, we reshot something um, that worked out really well. <laughs> um, but when I got there, we reshot it in two different ways. So technically we had three versions of one thing um, and they went, with one of it and it worked out. I'm not going to say more because I don't know how much I can legally say about it. So, you know. Right. Um, anything you can say about uh, future stuff or no? Future One Piece stuff? Yeah. You, you, you don't have to. I understand. Uh, NDAs you know, I, I can say, I can say that uh, there is definitely a season two. I can say that if they books. do season two well, there will be a season three. <laughs> and if they do season three well, there will be a season yeah. four. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, no, there's definitely more coming. Um, I'm, I, I, I don't know anything. Sure. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. I'm Cheers not. To that. Uh, a little gomu mm. gomu no cheers to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, any final thoughts or things to share with members of the Facebook group One Piece Two Million Fans and OPFandom.com? So Stephen uh, John Ward. <laughs> who ha who has no relation no relation to Jeff Ward, right? Oh yeah. You're the you're the I think the second person to ever ask me that. Um <laughs> yeah, so no, Jeff Ward and I we I actually had a conversation with him okay. uh about this because I'm the only ward that I know in South Africa. And then oh. he, and my, but my surname is very British and actually comes from like a Scottish descent. Um, and so when he arrived, I was like, hey, Jeff, crazy thing. We have the same surname. Uh, what's that about? And then he told me, uh, it was like, no, we're not, we're, we're not related. I'm not going to give the whole story because I don't know if he wants, uh, yeah, you know, course, any course. of his personal life out there. So. But uh, uh, we're not actually related. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, to everyone on your, your, your channel and your Facebook group and stuff, uh, thank you for not being dicks. <laughs> Some of them are, though. <laughs> but, yeah, but you can be a dick, but you know but, what? Yeah. You're fighting for One Piece. You're That's not true. That's true. fighting That's true. because of One Piece. Yes, most um, of the community And that I can deal with. I can deal with this whole crap about, oh, Shanks is better, Mihawk is better, all that kind of, I don't care. But you're not fighting because, oh, Shanks is shit or Mihawks is shit. And then I just went full swear word, so whatever. Um, <laughs> but, you know, so thanks for giving the live action a shot. Um, thanks for believing in Oda, because at the end of the day, this was his baby and still is. Um, so, you know, if you hated the live action, you hated Oda. So. <laughs> you heard it here. <laughs> um, no, I mean, like, everyone can have their own opinion. I'm just really glad it worked out, and I'm glad the OG fans are happy, and I'm excited that new fans are happy. And what I'm most excited about is we got fans who never watched One Piece, who watched the live action because of OG fans, who are now watching the anime and reading the manga because of the live action, which was the, it is the one piece at the end of the day for us for like, that's what we wanted. We wanted this to come full circle. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, everyone to be involved in this community. And we, we, we brought it in from like younger than 13 all the way to like 65. You know, we, we got everyone. <laughs> I got my 81 year old father and 77 year old mother to watch it. And they used to like, be I like mean, what do you, what is this stuff? And now they're watching it. Now I love know, that. Yeah. Yeah. So. I absolutely love that. Like that to yeah. me is, is the point of this. Like one piece is about family and friendship and, and adventure. Mm -hmm. And you know, now everyone can do that. It's cool. Yes. It's damn cool. One piece. Changing. <laughs> one piece. That's Order it. <laughs> All right. One piece. Steven, John Finish Ward. Him. <laughs> Finish him.
uh, Stephen John <laughs> Ward. Now we're going to Mortal Kombat. All right, let's walk away from that. <laughs> Stephen John Ward, a deep man, a passionate man, loves Pokemon hats. And, uh, and I love Bleach. Thank, yes. Thank you for being with us. Um, sayonara. Sayonara. Point, let's point. Let's point to opfandom.com. Opfandom.com. Oh, I follow, can't see it. Yeah, it's in the middle. Stephen this way? Oh, you can't see it. Oh, follow our <laughs> handles. <laughs> Am I pointing the right way? No. Yes. Now you're doing it. Ah ah. Frankie I feel like Super. I'm doing the uh, when we're gonna turn. Um, what, what is Goku and, and Vegeta turn? Oh god, right, right, something like yeah. that. Gogeta. Peace, everyone. Dun 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 dun. That song is stuck in my head all the time. <laughs>